Hi everybody, this is Olga from Eagle and in this video I wanted to give you a little bit of an insight into one of my most favorite places in the world. Those of you who know me well already know that that place is the Hermitage Museum. For me, the Hermitage Museum is, yes, it is about some amazing interiors, yes, it is about being the home of our royal family, but the number one thing that matters to me about the Hermitage and the number one thing that I love about this museum is its amazing art collection. I remember when I was studying to be a tour guide, I got especially fascinated by the Hermitage's collection of modern art and that's how I fell in love with some amazing impressionists and post-impressionists and as you can see on the wall behind me, um, these are some of my favorite artists. I'm an absolute fan of Vincent van Gogh, uh, Paul Gauguin, and some other fascinating artists whose works you can see at the Hermitage Museum. And today I wanted to share with you about some of my most favorite works there in that section. And I want to start by just sharing with you how this collection of modern art even ended up in the Hermitage Museum, because um, as you might know, most of our art collection was gathered by our royal family, the Romanos, and they were mostly into classic art. So they did not um, purchase any works by the Impressionists or Post-Impressionists or <laughs> let alone anything beyond that. But at the same time, there were people in Russia that were their contemporaries that were into modern art. Uh, in fact, there were two art collectors in Russia at that time, they were both men. Uh, their last names were Shukin and Morozov. And both of them had wonderful private collections of modern art. It was contemporary art for them at that time. And uh, Shukin was even a friend of Matisse's. He knew him personally and Matisse created some works for him. And so uh, these paintings were not in the original Romanov's Hermitage. And then in 1917, in our country, we had a revolution. And after the revolution, uh, some of the pieces that belonged to Shukin and Morozov, as well as other aristocratic families, uh, their art collections, they got nationalized. And so they were basically taken away from those families and placed into museums, mostly. And this is how the Hermitage got its chunk of the modern art collection. Uh, they had works by Renoir, Monet, Cézanne, many, many more. And then also during World War II, a big chunk of the modern art collection appeared from Germany as uh, Soviet troops who went to Germany took some pieces of art from private German collections and also brought them to the Hermitage Museum. The thing is, at that point, Russia was ruled by Joseph Stalin uh, and works by Impressionists and Post-Impressionists were not actually displayed um, in the museum at all because these works of art were considered too bourgeois for true communist citizens and they were mostly in the storages. That's where those pieces from Germany were placed. And for a long time, uh, people in the world did not actually know where those pieces ended up, the pieces that were taken from Germany. It was a big mystery. Eventually, uh, some people in Leningrad, which is what St. Petersburg was called at that time, demanded that modern art works be displayed in the Hermitage Museum. And that is when the world realized that this whole time there were works by Impressionists and Post-Impressionists hidden in the Hermitage, the works that the whole world considered missing. They were now there and uh, they are known as the hidden treasures now. And currently in the Hermitage, the hidden treasures and the works from the collections of Shukin and Morozov, uh, they are ex exhibited together in the beautiful building of a general headquarters. And some of my most favorite pieces in that building are pieces by Vincent van Gogh. I love him. He is my favorite artist ever. Uh, I read a lot about him. And definitely uh, the works uh, by van Gogh that we have at the Hermitage 
are absolutely worth seeing and today I want to focus on two paintings one is called the arena in Arl the other one is called the ladies of Arl and those of you who know anything about uh, Van Gogh's biography you know that Arl is a town in the south of France where Vincent Van Gogh went to live after briefly leaving with his brother in Paris where he wasn't really accepted by the artist community and he decided to go to the south of France to start his own artist community, right? Uh, you might know about the famous yellow house that he furnished so that his friends go and live there with him. Uh, for example, Gauguin um, was supposed to come there and live there with him. And uh, even though Vincent van Gogh was in search of his unique style in art, uh, before he went to Arles, uh, in the time that he spent in Paris, he certainly was influenced by many different schools of art. And um, one big school of art that he was absolutely influenced by was called Cloisonnism. And in these works of art that they created, um, what they would often do, they would take a spot of bright color, let's say um, a yellow circle, right? And they would outline it with black. First of all, it reminds me a lot of Gauguin's works. So you can see some of his works here on the screen. But at the same time, if we don't connect it with any particular artist, uh, these types of paintings look like, almost like stained glass. And this is one of the things that those type of paintings were compared to. And so if you look at the painting, the arena in Arles, you can see the influence of Clausenism on it, as there are lots of bold, bright shapes that are outlined with black lines. And this arena in Arles is such a significant place for the life of Vincent van Gogh as one of the most famous things that people know about him is that he cut off his ear. And there are many theories about why exactly he did it. We don't know for sure, but one of them is the Corrida theory. And um, in Arles, there was this ancient arena where every year they had the Corrida fights and uh, the Toreador that uh, managed to conquer a bull would be presented um, a bull's ear, right? So in a way, a bull's ear is a symbol of defeat. And Van Gogh, when he went to live in Arles, uh, he had certain hopes, he had plans, he had dreams. Um, and when he presented, when he cut off his ear that he wanted to present to Gagan, right, it was almost a symbol of defeat, right? This is just one of the theories about what happened. And this arena in Arles is the place that so greatly influenced Van Gogh about that. Another piece in the same room, it's called the Ladies of Arles. And the Ladies of Arles are greatly influenced by, uh, by another school of art called pointillism. And the name pointillism really speaks for itself as pointillists created their works of art with uh, the help of points. Pointillists used these beautiful, tiny, intricate points in their works of art that together created the impression of a full picture. But if you came closer to a painting, you would see that it consisted of little dots or points. And so Van Gogh uh, was um, definitely influenced by that school and we can see that in the ladies of Arl. Uh, notice the shawls of the ladies that are standing in the front of the painting and you will see uh, that uh, the shawls are decorated with little dots and uh, an amazing thing about this painting is that it never leaves the Hermitage Museum it is always there and the reason is because how much paint Van Gogh uses for the painting. You know, uh, <laughs> some of his contemporaries wrote in their memoirs that Van Gogh attacks the canvas. He comes to, onto it with so much rigor and he puts so much paint onto the canvas. And this is the thing about this painting. It has so much paint on it that um, it, um, it cracks. If you stand close to this painting, you will be able to see the cracks in the paint. And there is a risk that if this painting travels, 
paint might just fall off. And I heard that the restorers that work at the Hermitage have to inject this painting with special glue uh, just so the paint stays in its place. Uh, anyway, uh, this painting just displays for me the personality of Vincent van Gogh so much. These two paintings are not the only paintings by van Gogh that we have at the Hermitage and definitely not the only post-impressionist paintings. If you are interested in finding out more, definitely check out uh, the information under this video to find out how you can see more of the Hermitage with me. I hope you enjoyed this video. Please give me a thumbs up subscribe to my channel and I will see you soon. Bye!